Hi, I'm Andy, and this is Adishi Life. In my previous fried pork mukbang, I introduced you to pickled wild garlic. Since we're now into spring and wild garlic is growing everywhere, I thought it was the best time to show you not only how to find it, but how to turn it into one of the best side dishes you can make for grilled food. I'm actually foraging locally, just a five minute walk away from my home to the Chalter Nature Reserve. There are a few secret spots I like to visit each year. You can forage for wild garlic anytime between March and June. I like to go to mid-March when they've just started to come up, which means that they'll have a chance to regrow for others to pick in the coming months. In the later months, they'll grow flowers and the garlic is weaker in flavour with tougher leaves. They're still edible but not suitable for this recipe. Wild garlic! Okay, so I didn't just stumble upon this by chance. I actually foraged here the year before, and when I came last week to check, there was still a lot of garlic. It looks like somebody's already been here though, and they've got all the best leaves, so I'm going to check out another spot. This is a new area I found last week. It's actually in plain sight, but it seems like no one's actually noticed. The only problem is there's a lot of people walking around me. Personally, I just want somewhere quiet and hidden. I don't really like people seeing what I'm doing with uh, all this wild garlic. People think I'm weird. The leaves in this area are a little bit small for my needs, so I'm going to move on. Okay, so when you're looking for wild garlic, look for somewhere that's quite wet and damp and in the darkness. Uh, wild garlic grows where it's a little bit dark. So the way to tell if it's actually wild garlic is if you get the leaf, just crumple it up a bit and smell it, it will smell like garlic. You can't mistake it for anything else. I think I've got enough. Three bags. Last year I picked one and a half bags which lasted me roughly about a year. I mean that was me being stingy with how much I was eating so hopefully this will last a lot longer. And now onto the tedious part. Because I picked these outside, they all need to be washed and dried. And once they're pickled, I'm going to put them into two of these 5 litre containers. Quite a lot of work. Once you've washed and dried all of the leaves, we need to make the base for the pickle. I'm making a stock base and just using a few ingredients I have to hand. So to start, I add 1 litre of water to a pan. A few pieces of kombu, which is dried seaweed some chopped spring onion, an apple, and an onion. Bring the stock to a boil and reduce the heat. Leave it until all of the vegetables are soft. To make the base, pour four cups of the stock into another pan. Now if you're feeling lazy, you don't need to use stock, you can just use water. The end result will be fairly similar. Add three cups of soy sauce and one and a half cups of sugar. Yes, I know there's brown sugar in there, but I ran out of white, so add one cup of vinegar and then put the pan on to boil. When it starts to boil, turn it off and put one more cup of vinegar in. You now want to leave the mixture to cool for the next step. So now that these are washed and dried, we're going to put them into the container and we're going to sort of put them in rows. So we'll do sort of rows of 10 going one way, tail on this end. And then we'll do a row of 10 going the opposite way. So these tails go this way next to the original ones. Got it? And using the now cooled mixture, you want to pour it all over the leaves. As you can see, not all of the leaves are above the mixture. What I'm going to do is I'm going to press them down with some of these plates and put the lid on. 
what you want to do now is you want to leave this for three days. Leave it outside, don't put it in the fridge yet. I actually miscalculated how many leaves I'd need, so in the end I ended up with three containers full. That's 3,000 leaves. After the three days are up, you want to take the mixture out of the containers and reboil them. You're basically repeating the last process. Now the leaves have gone down a little bit, that's because they've lost some water. So pour the mixture back into a pan and bring it to a boil. After the mixture is cooled, refill the containers and put them in the fridge. You can start eating these after a few weeks. The longer you leave them, the better they get. Finally, it's been a long day, but what better way to end it than having some wild garlic from last year. So if you look, this wild garlic is kind of dark compared to the one from earlier. It's a lot, what would you say? Uh, it's got a lot more flavor. Let's give this one a try. So I'm gonna try a bit of the beef with the wild garlic. So you get the wild garlic, put it down, and then you just wrap. And then you put it in your mouth and eat. It's super delicious. The meat is nice and salty and it's got some seasoning, but you wrap the, the leaf around it and it's a really sort of, I don't know, it's a sort of contrast. It's a little bit of a sharp taste and maybe a hint of the garlic taste. It's really nice. Please try it. Uh, let's have some pork. Just wrap that up. Again, it's perfect. The pork is a little bit fatty, of course, but the acidity of the, the pickle cuts right through it. If you've been watching my previous video, you would have seen that I made some uh, quick kimchi, and this is the finished result. If you haven't seen it, then please watch the video above. You might learn something useful. I did. It's really good with grilled meat. Please try. So no Korean meal is complete without a bit of soju. This one's a grapefruit soju. Cheers. If you've enjoyed this video, as always, like everybody else, I'm going to ask you, please like the video, please subscribe. It would really help me out if you press the little bell button so every time my videos come up, you'll uh, be notified and you can watch them for all the lovely food making goodness that I can provide. Thanks.